Okay, and then second part of this part module of the LPIC, let's talk about pipes. They are super cool, super important, and very, very, very useful in daily life. Practically, they are... I've been using them even before teaching them in this course because you need them in Linux life. As you know, Unix philosophy is shining. Part of it is having small tools which does one thing but does it excellent. Having pipes, you can combine these tools and create larger things, just like playing with Legos. You have small components and they are capable of doing one thing greatly, magically good. And when you have pipe, you can combine these parts and create larger tools. This is part of the Unix philosophy. This is the pipe character. Shift with the key which is above the enter or return in most of the keyboards. Please note that sometimes it's like this. This is a pipe, the other kind of pipe, the Linux pipe. And it will let you pipe different commands to each other. In a simple method, if you have one command one here and pipe it to command two, the output of this command will be used as the input of the second command. For example, something which we often use is ls one pipe to wc l. ls one will run an ls and will use dash one. So only one file per line. WC, you remember it's a word count from previous sessions. Dash L will show you number of lines in its input. So practically here, I'm showing you that I have 14 files here because LS-1 makes this. I will pipe this output. So this will be the input for my second command. WC-L will tell you how many lines are there. So I have 14 files here. You can use it in different areas. For example, I have one file which is called who uses what. Jody uses Fedora. Linux uses Fed Fedora. No, Vim. Linux uses Fedora. Bob uses Ubuntu, Jack uses Arch, and Sarah uses Fedora. I want to see how many of each Linux is being used. So I need to separate the second part. I know you can do it faster with your eyes, but we have to use it, the Linux pipes. So let's separate the second part, Fedora, Fedora, Ubuntu. You know the cut command from previous sessions. So I can do cut. My delimiter is this. And I want the second field. On what? On who uses what? I have this. But I have to eliminate this extra space. So I can pipe this command. We know the set. Execute. On the set, I can substitute A with B. So I will substitute space with nothing and I used a pipe. So the output of this command, which was this, will be the input of this command. So set is being run on that. Now I want to count these. But you know, before counting with unique-c, we had this in previous sections, if you want to have a look, we have to sort first. So I have this output, I will sort it and then I will pipe it to unique-c now I have this but I want them to be in order here it's like this I want the one with the more usage on top so I can output again with sort-numeric in reverse so again up to here it was this I will say, okay, now pipe it. So this will be the input of this to sort numeric. 
and this is what I have now. You can see it's very, very, very strong to reach your goals. In many cases, when you're writing small Python pair, whatever scripts to do small stuff, Linux tools are capable of doing the same. Some commands might not accept a file as their input. In that case, we always do cat file name and then pipe it to the next command so the content of, the, of this file will be used here and sometimes some commands like wc will accept the file too so i can say wc-l file name or omit the file name do cat file name pipe it to wc some people will hate this say no you have to provide the file name to wc it's much cooler do whatever you want as long as you understand what you are doing if you wanted a much better example, more complicated, very powerful, have a look at this video I'm showing you here. It is called Why the Command Line Rocks Using GNU Tools to Something. And let me speak about two commands and we will finish this section. Up to now, you saw redirects in previous video. Here you saw the pipe. You have one command here, another command here. The outputs of this command will be used as inputs of this command and you have x args x args accept some input so you can pipe it something then it will have a command here for example echo and will write all of its input at the end of this command it's very useful when you are getting a list of things somewhere and you want to do something on them one by one or some of them in one place or whatever as a naive example we have the ls i can do ls x args echo so practically i'm running because i have xs it will look into its input which is ls list of these will write them here practically i'm running echo all of these in this case, it was not useful because ls is writing them down by itself. But sometimes if I wanted to do something else, it would be very fun. For example, if I wanted to move only ones with f, with blah, blah. Sometimes you will need it. You will see someday in your life. But for lpic, you should know uh, x arcs. It reads space, tab, new line, and end of file delimited strings from a standard input executes the provided utility with the strings at arguments will read whatever input with space new line whatever and adds them to its provided utility sometimes you want them to be in different place for example again i'm running echo these are files then the name of all these files but if i wanted to Put the name of the files here i could use dash i i could use dash i and then use whatever word then use the same word here so it says sorry i put it in the wrong place now i'm doing x args dash i here so it says okay run this but put whatever is in the input here i could use any word i wanted these bob are here these errors are here as you can see there are two different two more switches which is good to know dash l breaks based on new lines dash n for example one runs provided utility after receiving one argument so will run one by one or two by two in general you have an understanding and sometime in your life you will be happy knowing it sometimes it helps a lot and the last command you should know about is t what's the problem with redirecting i'm saying ls sent the output to file so it does the ls redirects the standard output to file i have to check into the file and see okay this was the output sometimes you want to write it to a file and see it on the screen too t helps you there i can say ls pipe it to t file 
practically T gets its input via pipe, creates two different streams of it. One goes to STD out, which is this. One goes to the provided file or files. You can say file one, file two, file three. It goes to all of these files alongside STD out. This is how T works. It's useful because sometimes you want to run a command. You want to keep the output in the file and you want to see the progress or see the output for yourself. So it's useful. That's it. One switch in T is dash A, which is for append. So if the file exists, it will append it. Also, this is a trick. If you wanted std error to be in the output of these files, you had to redirect it first to std out. You know how it's done. You can say redirect std error to wherever std out goes. Have fun and hope you understood correctly. I'm sure you did. It's very easy. It was redirect, which is because of the signs. It's very easy to understand. LS output goes here, a device or a file, or run FTP with the input from this file, one file name with some lines in it, and pipe which give the output of this command to this command. That was it. T and X args are good. Have fun.